All right, I've got everything in order. What are you making? A family tree of Rolance's royal family. This is everything I know thus far. You sure are dedicated. Well, things like this are important. Let's take this as an opportunity to reassess our situation. All right, Miklio, take the lead. Listen up. To start off with, the late Emperor Doran had three sons, Leon, Conan, and Light. Leon and Conan are both sons of the late Empress. That is to say, they are her royal highness's sons. But they both passed away. Both of them? Apparently there was some sort of power struggle, but I don't know the exact details. Hmm. But anyways, the one who took the throne was Emperor Light at a very young age. An emperor born from a concubine? The Empress must have been unhappy. Especially since she's supposedly rather ambitious. That's why she adopted her nephew, so she could involve him in the next struggle for succession of the throne. And so now the secretary on the Emperor's side is standing off against her. Boy, sounds like a lot of drama. The secretary seems to be reputed as a person of great integrity, but... Isn't the secretary the one who hired the scattered bones to murder the Empress? That's what gets me. Why did Rose accept that request? The royal family of Rolands is supposed to be her ultimate foe. It's highly likely she's just being used. In the end, the only ones who will suffer in this power struggle are the citizens of Rolands. Doesn't that mean anything to the Empress? Could there be reason behind the request of the Secretary? I think Rose took the job to find that out for herself. Like she always has? Yeah. Don't forget that we're already involved in this, too. I know. I'm glad you took the time to explain to us. Then it was all worth it. Saray, when you said they're opposites... Boy, are you thick. Thick, Leo. Hey, I was gonna say you meant her and Alicia, if you'd let me finish. Forget it. The moment is over. Mickly over. How did my life get to this point? It's not a bad thing for them to contrast with each other, just... They've been striving for the same goal, even though their motivations and circumstances are different. Right. Alicia chose to carry out her duty as royalty, even though it hasn't been going as well as she'd hoped. While Maltran never wanted to be a knight, but nevertheless, she's achieved great deeds and earned the respect of the people. In each case, things haven't gone entirely as planned. Perhaps both of them feel that way. What's that? A cactus with flowers. It's a plant, so yeah. What did you expect? I didn't know they bloomed. Their thorns are the more famous part. Well, you know what they say. Every rose has its thorn. That's plant racist, you know. Plant racist? Many plants have pretty flowers. A certain subset have thorns. Why do the roses get a proverb out of it? Pure arrogance is what it is. A rosaceous conspiracy to oppress all other flora. Uh, right. Okay, then can you think of a good cactus proverb? Every cactus has its flower. Jinx! <laughs> I should have tried harder. That's a funny thing they've got here. A doll inside of a doll. Oh? You see them a lot in the north. It's folk art. Hmm. You don't think... Maybe it's meant to symbolize the relationship between seraphim and humans? Whoa, uh... I wouldn't go overthinking it. But look, they specifically chose this odd configuration. There has to be some meaning behind it, don't you think? Hmm. Undoubtedly. So what would you say it means, then, having a human inside of a Seraph? Well, maybe... Maybe it represents the distinct personality inside each Seraph? No, hold on. Perhaps, in depicting a fanciful inverse of the typical Seraph and human-vessel relationship, it's meant to symbolize coexistence between the two. Zavid, is there anything inside the innermost doll? Huh? Yes. Typically, in the very core is... A plumpet. A plumpet? Hmm. Yes, yes, a symbol, of course. But of what? A pit is a seed. A sign of rebirth, perhaps? But then, why a plum? 
True, some bloom in the spring, but... Hmm... I'm starting to get why you like toying with our boy Mickey here. I know, right? In some ways, he's even more pure than Saray. Such rich philosophy. Very profound. Why did she... Rose... Is the injury you got from him starting to hurt? Oh, no, I'm totally fine. It's just really embarrassing for me to get hurt like that when being kept ransom. No. What's really scary is that he would do such a thing without hesitation. And plus... Simone's reaction. Yes. Her illusions are really something. Her skills are quite unusual. But there's something even stranger about her. You mean how she isn't affected by malevolence? Yes. Or rather, how deeply she believes in him from the bottom of her heart. But how could she? When she was shot, she was smiling. How could she trust him so? Only she knows the answer. But Simone has remained a seraph while following the will of Heldolf. That much is true. So then what's really dangerous is how pure she actually is. Pretty ironic. Yeah. Think I'm feeling a bit tired today. Yeah, there's no shortage of things we need to do. Now we have the Earth in Historia, and the Storyteller to deal with as well. The world we live in is full of secrets and mystery. I hear you. It's really frustrating being pushed around and intentionally kept in the dark like this. Yeah, but isn't that kinda natural? What do you mean? Ain't nothing but secrets in the world of merchants. The market, guild rules, networks, conveyance routes, all kinds of things you can't say in bid riggings. Every day is a battle against secrecy. I see. Yeah, you're right. In our case, that secrecy is all over Maltellus and his past history. Of course it is. I am a shepherd after all. And you like it, don't you? Of course. He's not kidding. Well, as long as you understand. Okay, let's keep up the never-ending battle against secrecy. Savid, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? I don't like that look on your face. Please, put some clothes on. It's just not right. I wish I could, toots, but it's part of my oath. Is that true? Yeah. That's the reason I've been traveling alone. It's not like you're the only one who's got an oath to follow, you know? You have one too, Edna? Yeah, to prevent my brother from leaving the mountains. I eat peanuts every day, an amount equal to my age. And I need to get a tan to shed a layer of skin at least once a month. Oh, I remember Dazzle saying something about an oath he had to keep his teeth all jaggedly sharp. I can't tell if you're joking or not. <laughs> Look who's talking. But that's what the Oath of the Seraphim is like, isn't it? Yes. We must keep the truth in our hearts. That's the nature of the Oath. Alright! I finally found where he's located. H hey! Careful! You okay? Thank you. I'm a bit weary from my journeys. But it's time to settle the scores. Gotta hurry to the cat's corner. The turtles. He's still hurt. He's going to cat's corner, huh? Is he going to have a duel there? It's the illusionary village where cats live. <laughs> It might become a huge cat and turtle free-for-all. So, I wonder, where exactly is this cat's corner? I've never heard of it before. I don't know much either. We're gonna have to do some research. Hmm. Let's start by asking Seraphim who are knowledgeable about regional lore. Good idea. Guardian Seraphim are more likely to know something about the lore or legends.